at a range of latitude it should be greater than this and less than this okay ek ek question tha mmd ka usme tha ki declination was 17 north uh, range of latitude will be to first ye l plus d less than 90 se bhi nikalna hai aur ye third wala bhi use karke nikalna right sir that's okay. right beta okay, that's sir. right वट यू डू इज जो दोनों कंडीशन है ना हमारी उन दोनों में आप ये डेक्लिनेशन की वैल्यू डाल दो जैसे ही आप ये डेक्लिनेशन की वैल्यू डालोगे यू विल सी वन कंडीशन विल टेल यू लेटीट्यूड शुड बी लेस देन दिस अदर कंडीशन विल टेल यू लेटीट्यूड शुड बी ग्रेटर देन दिस सो यू गेट अरेंज अंडरस्टूड सर थैंक यू ओके ग्रेट सो बेटा लास्ट लेक्चर में हमने वी डेड ट्वाइलाइट बेस्ड ए कपल ऑफ कंडीशंस एंड देन इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी डेड सम डेफिनेशन रिलेटेड टू टाइम आई शोड यू सम डेफिनेशन सो याद है वो आज यूज होंगी बेटा याद है ओके ग्रेट so today we will be seeing some numerical questions which are based on rational horizon diagram and uh, these are the questions where sometimes the uh, uh, definitions or concept of time is also used so i will show you few questions we will see one two three questions related to that so that will give you an idea how to attempt these rational horizon based questions the master key or the basic technique is the same as i told you that uh, you put all the information which is there in the question pick it up and you put it in the rational horizon diagram once you put it there it will give you a pzx triangle and uh, solving that pzx triangle you will be able to get your answer so that is the approach that is the basic fundamental which we use in solving these questions so i think people have joined in so shall we go into the presentation beta ready yes yes okay सो so, ये जो क्वेश्चन हैं जो हम आज करने वाले हैं दे दे कम इन आवर पेपर एज क्वेश्चन नंबर एट एंड नाइन सो एट एंड नाइन क्वेश्चन में दीज टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन दे कम इन आवर एग्जाम दीज कुड बी बेस्ड ऑन रैशनल हॉराइजन डायग्राम दे कुड बी पीज एड एक्स ट्राइंगल क्वेश्चन दे कुड इन्वॉल्व सरकम्पोलर काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन वी डिड ए कपल ऑफ सरकम्पोलर एग्जाम्पल ऑल्सो सो सरकम्पोलर काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन कैन बी देयर ये सारे के सारे कॉन्सेप्ट इन क्वेश्चन में यूज होते हैं सो फर्स्ट वी विल कवर देम अप एंड आफ्टर दिस वंस वी कवर दीज टाइप ऑफ नोमरिकल्स देन आई विल बी शोइंग यू सम मोर कॉन्सेप्ट विच आर यूज इन क्वेश्चन नंबर एट एंड नाइन दीज आर द कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक स्टेलर मैग्नीट्यूड कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक कैपलस लॉज ऑफ प्लानिटरी मोशन सो दैट्स वॉट वी विल बी गोइंग टू आफ्टर दिस सो लेट मी ओपन अप द प्रेजेंटेशन एंड वी स्टार्ट विद रैशनल हॉराइजन numericals so you'll be doing individual star identification also right a uh, star identification is not something separate if you know rational horizon how the question is to be done star identification can be done then and there i'll show you a star identification example also okay so let's go in this presentation uh, we are going to learn about the numerical which are based on rational horizon diagram now before we go into the actual questions 
some of the questions have the concept of uh, local sidereal time so let me first explain to you what is the meaning of local sidereal time also known as lst lst or local sidereal time is the westerly r angle of the aries measured from observer's meridian let me show you with the help of a diagram let's make the diagram of the earth looking from top of the north pole so if you look at the earth from top of the north pole the north pole would appear to be exactly in the center this will be the north pole and the circumference which you see will be the equator so we are looking at the earth from top of the north pole let's show the greenwich meridian in this diagram so by convention in these diagrams we always show the greenwich meridian pointing downwards now exactly opposite to it is the 180 degree meridian now let's assume our observer in this diagram let's assume the observer is uh, at this particular location we can now show the observer's meridian also so this is the observer's meridian exactly opposite to this will be the inferior meridian of the observer this is the inferior meridian of observer now let's assume that uh, aries was at this particular location now we can show the local sidereal time lst in this particular diagram when you look from top of the north pole in this uh, way then the westerly direction is the clockwise direction the clockwise direction in this diagram represents the westerly direction you can see this arrow showing the westerly direction to us so now we know lst is the westerly r angle of the aries measured from the observer's meridian so we need to start or take our reference from the observer's meridian from the observer's meridian we need to go in the westerly direction you see westerly direction and we need to go up to the aries so from the observer meridian measuring the angle in the westerly direction up to the celestial meridian of aries this is what we call as lst local sidereal time now this can be represented in uh, angular uh, units as well as in the units of time in angular unit it is represented in degrees and if we want to convert it into the units of time 360 degrees is equal to 24 hours so this gives us a factor of 15 so when you measure this angle in degrees you divide it by 15 and you will get the lst in the units of time also hour minutes and seconds so this is the definition of local sidereal time westerly r angle of aries measured from the observer's merit let's now go into our uh, first question based on the rational horizon diagram the question says during morning twilight an unknown star bore south with a altitude of 40 degree 20 minutes during evening twilight at lst local sidereal time 3 hours 34 minutes and 24 seconds the same star bore north with a altitude of 13 degrees 08 minutes identify the star now before we start solving this question uh i would like to explain to you the basic concept or the basic procedure which we follow in all these uh, celestial navigation based question now the basic thing to be done is 
नंबर वन ड्रॉ द रैशनल होराइजन डायग्राम वेन एवर यू गेट सच ए क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन प्रिंसिपल ऑफ नेविगेशन यू ड्रॉ द रैशनल होराइजन डायग्राम एंड इन दैट रैशनल होराइजन डायग्राम यू ट्राई टू फिट इन ऑल द रिक्वायर्ड इंफॉर्मेशन विच इज गिवन टू अस so whatever information is given a particular celestial body its bearing its altitude or any other information we try to put in that particular diagram now as we put all this information in the rational horizon diagram the diagram itself tells us or leads us to the solution of the question in most of the cases uh, the question can be solved using uh, uh, spherical trigonometry Uh, you will have a pzx triangle formed and uh, you can use the spherical trigonometry cosine formula or napier rule one of them will be applicable in that triangle and by applying these formula you will be able to solve the question easily so this is the basic concept which we use make the rational horizon diagram put all the information what is given to us in the question and we will get a lead from the diagram itself how the question needs to be solved either it will be a very simple calculation uh, just adding or subtracting some values or it will be a solution of the pzx triangle using the cosine formula or the napier rule now let's try to check this concept whether the concept works or not in uh, this particular question let's fit these things one by one we will uh, first make the rational horizon diagram so you make a circle and you show these four points representing the directions north east south and west n e s w these four points are shown now at the center of this circle we have the zenith so we can join n and s we can join w and e the point of intersection gives us the center of the circle which is the zenith so the center of this diagram represents the zenith of the observer the circumference represents the rational horizon of the observer now let's try to put all the given information in this particular diagram now they have told us that during morning twilight the star was bearing south now south bearing in this diagram is represented by this line zs zs represents south bearing the point s is on the rational horizon with altitude 0 the point z is the zenith of the observer with altitude 90 so our star was bearing south that means it has to be somewhere on this line zs so star bore south with a altitude of 40 degree 20 minutes so our star which is on line zs has a altitude of 40 degree 20 minutes now we know the radius of this diagram is 90 degrees because uh, its center is zenith the circumference is rational horizon every point on the rational horizon is 90 degrees away from the zenith so the radius is 90 degrees and uh, the altitude of the star is 40 degree 20 minutes so that means it is 40 degree 20 minutes above the horizon now on this line zs s point represents the horizon if you go 40 degree 20 minutes away from it this is the location 40 degree 20 minutes away from the horizon this is the location where the star is so we have shown the star's position at the time of morning twilight and let's mark that position as x further the question says during evening twilight at lst so and so the same star bore north so north bearing represented by zn the star had a altitude of 13 degree 08 minutes so it was 30 degrees 08 minutes from the horizon now n point represents the horizon here so if we go 13 degree 08 minutes above the horizon this is where the star is at the time of evening 
twilight. Now we have the location of the star at the time of evening twilight as well as at the time of morning twilight. It is the same star. Now the same star can be at these two locations that is X location in morning twilight and X dash location in evening twilight only in one way. Its declination circle has to pass from both these locations. The star always remains on its declination circle. And there is only one way a circle can be drawn passing from these two positions. How can we draw a circle? The circle can be drawn in this particular way only. So this circle which is passing from X and X dash represents the declination circle of the star. Now we are aware that at the center of all declination circles is the pole. So let's mark off the center of this particular circle. The center will be north of Z because you see SX distance is 40, 20, which is much greater as compared to NX dash, which is only 13.08. So the circle is offset to the north. The center will be north of the zenith and the center of the circle has to be the pole. We are aware that all the declination circles are centered at the pole. Now the star will be moving in this particular direction marked by these uh, green arrows. This is how the star will be moving. We can also show the equinoctial in this diagram. Equinoctial is 90 degree away from the pole. So you go 90 degree away from the pole and this point is the Q point from where the equinoctial is passing and equinoctial always passes from the west and east points. So this blue color line which you see in the diagram now represents the equinoctial WQE. So now better before we proceed further, any doubts coming to your mind up to here? Yes, sir. Sir, how did this equinoctial come so down, sir? Okay, beta. Uh, beta, one thing is that equinoctial will always be in a direction opposite to the pole. So if you see the north mein pole in the north, then equinoctial will be in the south. That's one thing, right? Yes. And second thing, the equinoctial Q point, Q point of the equinoctial is always 90 degrees away from the pole. In fact, all the points are 90 degrees away from the pole. But for understanding, always remember this Q point will be 90 degrees away from the pole, right? Right. And we also know that the radius of this circle is 90 degrees. So we get an idea of how long 90 degrees is. So from point P, you go 90 degrees towards south. That is how you identify point Q. Okay, understood. Okay, beta. Any more doubts, beta? And this uh, PZ is equal to QS, right, sir? Exactly, beta. PZ, Papa to Zulu, is always equal to QS. Sir, pole P ko ek explain kar dijiye na sir. Pole ko explain beta means how did the pole come here? Yes sir. Okay. Is center the center of the this new circle or what? Uh, beta pole is the center of all declination circles. Hamne pehle to yaha pe declination circle banaya hai using the information which is given. एक बार सर्कल हमारे पास आ गया तो जो भी उसका सेंटर आएगा वो पोल होगा सो दैट्स हाउ वी आइडेंटिफाइड द पोल ओके बेटा गॉट इट यस सर ओके ग्रेट एनी मोर डाउट्स बेटा ग्रेट बेटा एक्सीलेंट सो लेट्स प्रोसीड अहेड
Now, the LHA 80s is uh, uh, obtained from the value of local sidereal time. Uh, as I told you, local sidereal time is the westerly R angle of Aries measured from the observer's meridian. And this is in the units of uh, time, 3 hours, 34 minutes and 24 seconds. As I told you, we can easily convert it into angular uh, units by multiplying by 15. So we multiply this LST 33424 by 15 and we get a value of 53 degrees 36 minutes. So this 53 degrees 36 minutes is the westerly R angle of Aries measured from the observer's meridian. And this is the definition of LHA Aries. In fact, if LST is given to you, if you convert it into angular units it gives you the LHA of Aries. LHA of Aries is the angle at the pole contained between the observer's meridian and the celestial meridian of Aries measured westwards and this is exactly what LST is. So multiplying uh, the sir. LST by 15 we get the value of LHA Aries which is 53 degree 36 minutes. Go ahead beta. Uh, sir, uh, do we need to mark the LHRs on this uh, rational regime? Karenge, beta, abhi mark karenge. Oh, okay. okay. Now let's show this value in our diagram here. The observer's meridian is represented by P Z. QS. This particular line represents the observer's meridian. Now LHA Aries is 5336. So from the observer's meridian, if I draw an angle of 53 degree 36 minute, this is where the meridian of Aries would be. So from the observer's meridian, we go in the westerly direction. You see, this is the westerly direction by 53 degree 36 minutes and it gives us the celestial meridian of Aries. This is the location where Aries is going to be. So, you know, 53 degree Mara. No problem, beta. Aap ise chota bana lo, no issues. Okay, okay. Mujhe laga, aapne kisi purpose ke liye mara hai. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. You can make it smaller also. I've just made it for clarity. That's all. That's all. Now, you see, we can find out the westerly R angle between Aries and star X. Now, when Aries was at this particular location at the time of evening twilight, the Aries was at this particular location and our star was at the location of X dash. So Aries is at this particular location, the celestial meridian of Aries represented by P Aries and the star is on this particular celestial meridian the celestial meridian of the star represented by P X dash N. Now we can easily measure this particular angle, the green color angle in the diagram. What is this green color angle? It is the angle at the pole contained between the celestial meridian of Aries and the celestial meridian of the star. And this is the definition of S H A. So the SHA of this particular star can now easily be found. You can see from this point, you can follow the laser pointer from this point up to this point is 180 degrees. This is the angle between the observer's meridian and his inferior meridian. So this total angle is 180 degrees. 
the maroon color angle is 53 degree 36 minutes so the green angle has to be 180 minus 53 36 that gives us the value of 126 degrees 24 minutes so we get the SHA of this particular star the SHA of the star is known now what we do is you see we have this n x dash arc known to us it is 13 degrees 08 minutes we have the s x arc also known to us it is 40 degree 20 minutes and we are aware that from point s to z is 90 degrees z to n is again 90 degrees so this total n to s is 180 degrees now if i subtract 1308 nx dash and sx 40 20 from 180 i can get the diameter of this particular circle so 180 minus 13.0 13 degree 08 minutes minus 40 degree 20 minutes gives me the diameter of this circle which is xx dash now, if I divide the diameter by 2, I get the radius of this particular circle. The radius of this circle is Px dash. Now, this radius of the circle which I am getting is basically the polar distance of the star. This is the pole and point x or point x dash is the star. So, Px or px dash both representing the radius of the circle give me the polar distance of the star now we know 90 minus polar distance gives us the declination of the star so once we calculate px you, you see this is the value of px here we know pole to equinoctial is 90 degrees so 90 minus px gives you the declination of the star which in this case comes to be 26 degrees 44 minutes. So we get the declination of the star 2644. We get the SHA of the star, which is 126 degrees 24 minutes. With these two values, we can now go into the star information table on page 268 and we can look for this particular SHA. And from there, we find out that this particular star is Alpha having this given SHA and declination. Sir, declination no, uh, is possible. Uh, can we work out this excess dash because I am getting some uh, different answer. Uh, sure, beta. we can. Uh, just punch in the numbers in your calculators. 180 minus 1308 minus 4020. What are you getting? Correct. 126 degree 32 minutes. Yes, sir. Mil gaye, beta. Value got. Okay. Yes, sir. So I by mistake. Yes, sir. And then subtracted from 180. Okay. No issues. So you have you got the answer now, right? Yeah, then divide by two. That's right. That will give you polar distance. 90 minus polar distance gives you the declination. Sir, declination will be QX also. No? You can say QX will be also declination, sir. Correct? Exactly, beta. QX is the declination. You are right. Oh, sir, QX, X dex, dash or Jopur guy is in. Uh, that is nothing, beta. That is nothing. You are polar basically distance, going on yeah. other side of the pole. Q to X dash, you are going to the other side of the pole. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. How to find the star? Uh, you got the SHA and declination, right? Uh, yes, sir. Now you open up the almanac beta. Go to page 268. If you have it, just open it up. Now in page 268 table, look for a SHA of 126. That's what we got. 
so it is the stars are given in serial order of SHA. So start from first star, go up to SHA one hundred and twenty-six. What do you get there, beta? Alpha Cassis. Great, beta. You got the answer. Twenty-five marks. Uh, sir, one slide uh, back, Anna, sir. Oh, screenshot lena. OK, but uh, we will go back, uh, but the entire question is there. Uh, the solution is there. Uh, I'll go back. Don't worry. Any more doubts beta? Uh, sir, one, sir, one doubt. Sir. This red, red line is not a declination, right? Sir, red one is uh, celestial meridian passing through iris, right? Sir? Yeah, that's right, beta. The red line is basically representing the celestial meridian of Aries. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, great. So no more doubts, beta. Very good. Let me go back one slide now. Just a minute. Here it is, beta. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, great. So, shall we move ahead, beta, to next question? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, let's go. Let's now move on to the next question. On 13th of October 1992, in latitude 62 degrees 30 minutes north, Star Vega bore 270, and at the same time, an unknown star bore north with an altitude of 34 degrees. Identify the unknown star. We will follow exactly the same approach in this question. That is, we will make the rational horizon diagram and we will feed or input all the information what is given to us in the question in that diagram and the diagram will give us a lead. So let's uh, put all the information in the rational horizon diagram. We have the rational horizon on the screen now. We can show the NESW points. The center of this diagram represents the zenith of the observer. So you see the Z, the zenith coming up in the center. Irrespective of where the observer is or where the body is, these five points, NESW on the rational horizon and point Z at the center remain at these locations only. Now in this question, they have given us the latitude. The latitude is 62 degrees 30 minutes north. So it tells us that the zenith will be the north of the equinoctial or the Q point. Or in other words, the Q point would be south of the zenith. And we know that the arc ZQ, Z to Q represents the latitude of the observer and uh, this in our case is 62 degree 30 minutes so from the zenith i go 62 degrees 30 minutes south and this is where the equinoctial would pass and i will have the q point so you see the equinoctial is passing from q point and the equinoctial always passes from the east and west points so this W, Q, E, which we have on our diagram now, represents the equinoctial for this particular observer. Now, once the equinoctial is there, we can also show the pole. The pole, uh, in this case, the observer is in North Hemisphere. So we will have the North uh, uh, Celestial Pole as our elevated pole or visible pole. And uh, the pole is 90 
degree away from the equinoctial or the Q points. So from the Q point, I go 90 degrees away and uh, this is the point where I have the pole. Let's represent this point as uh, P. We have the pole in the diagram now. Now the next information which the question tells me is that star Vega bore 270. Now in this diagram, the 270 bearing is represented by line ZW. ZW represents 270 bearing. So Vega has to be somewhere on this line. I don't know the altitude of Vega. So I will pick up any random location here and I will put star Vega in this location. So we have the star Vega in our rational horizon diagram now. Uh, any doubts up to here beta before we proceed at? Yes. Okay, beta. Great. Oh, no. Very good. Great. Let's move ahead. Now the next information which is given in the question is the unknown star bore north with an altitude of 34 degrees at the same time when Vega was sighted. The unknown star was bearing north with the altitude of 34 degrees. Now coming back to our diagram, the ZN line represents the north bearing or 000 bearing. So the unknown star has to be somewhere on this line. Its altitude is given to us as 34 degrees. Now point N is on the horizon. Our star is 34 degrees above the horizon. So from point N going 34 degrees above the horizon, this is where the unknown star is. Let's mark the unknown star as X. So you can see now that all the information what was given to us in the question has been fed in the rational horizon diagram. Now what we uh, do next is I have star Vega in my diagram and uh, I have the pole, I have the zenith. So I'm going to draw the celestial meridian of star Vega. Its celestial meridian will originate from the pole and it will pass from star Vega extending downwards. So let us show the celestial meridian in the diagram. The maroon color line which you see from P going up to Vega and going further is the celestial meridian of Vega. Now concentrate your attention to the arc P to Vega. P to Vega. Now this arc is basically the polar distance of Vega. Polar distance of Vega. And we know that the polar distance is equal to 90 minus declination. You see from Vega to the equinoctial, this is the declination, which I'm uh, showing with the help of the laser pointer now. This is the declination of Vega. And we know equinoctial to pole is 90 degrees. So P to Vega has to be 90 minus declination of Vega and it is called as polar distance. Now we have the date 13th October 92 and we can get the declination of the Vega from the nautical almanac. So once you do 90 minus that, you get the polar distance. The, this is the value of the polar distance which will be obtained. So we have the uh, Papa Vega side, P Vega side known to us. Now have a, a look at the PZ Vega triangle. Okay, I have named it as Vega, otherwise this is the PZX triangle. So in this triangle, I'm uh, showing that triangle with the help of the laser pointer now. Now in that triangle, you see angle Z is a right angle. Because star Vega is at 270 bearing, 
the pole is north of the observer so the angle z is 90 degrees in this particular diagram and in this triangle we know the side pz papa zulu side is known to us it is the co lat of the observer or 90 minus latitude of the observer the latitude is 60 to 30 so 90 minus that is the side papa zulu pz that's why it is shown with a green tick now we also have the papa vega side which is the polar distance of vega 51 degrees 13.1 which we calculated found earlier now you see in this triangle papa zulu vega pz vega it's a spherical triangle all the three sides are uh, great circles and it has a speciality angle z is a right angle so we can apply the napier's rule in this triangle and we can find out anything else using these two known values so i will apply the napier's rule in this triangle and what i am going to find out is this angle p let me show that with a arrow in the diagram this angle p is what i am going to find out so using napier's rule using the two known parts i am going to find out this angle p now this angle p is basically the lha of star vega it is the lha of star vega so beta before we proceed ahead any doubts you are having till here please share so which will be the uh, lha sir of star vega uh, beta angle p angle p which you see here of pz vega triangle it is the lha okay sir you see it is the angle at the pole contained between meridian of the observer and the celestial meridian of vega so that's how let you vega yes sir All right chale aage beta yes sir let's go now the lha of star x if you look carefully the star x is on my inferior meridian it is on the other side of the pole p to n is the inferior meridian of the observer so any body on the inferior meridian its lha is 180 degrees so lha of the unknown star is 180 and the lha of vega has been found this is known to us now so i can from this information find out this angle which i am highlighting with the laser pointer and what is this angle this angle is november papa vega this is the angle which i am talking about november papa vega and what is this angle here this angle is lha of the unknown star minus lha of vega or you can say it is the difference of r angle between vega and the unknown star angle at the pole contained between celestial meridian of vega and celestial meridian of the unknown star so it is the difference of r angle between vega and this particular star now once i know this angle i know this is the difference between sha of the star x and the sha of star vega also because this is the r angle difference of r angle between the unknown star and vega so sha is also a r angle so whatever is the sha of vega plus this angle is going to give me the sha of the unknown star so what i am going to do now is i will check the sha of vega on 13th 13th october 1992 from the almanac to the sha of vega i will add up this particular angle and i am going to get the sha of the unknown star so we will find out the sha of the unknown star 
Now, to identify a star along with SHA, we also need its declination. Okay, before I proceed ahead with declination, uh, have a look better. Let me know if any doubts are there in SHA. Sir, aapne ZP Vega angle nikal liya, P jo andar ban raha triangle ke. That's right, beta. So, we have to subtract the bar. We have to next step. We have to do SHX minus SHA Vega. This is the same thing. What is the difference? Okay, beta. This is the same thing. I have to do this. This is the same thing. This is the That is November Papa Vega. This particular angle. This is the R angle between Vega and star X. Correct? Correct, sir. Now, if you have SHA of Vega known to you and you add this angle, it will give you SHA of the star because it is the R angle difference between them. Yes, sir. Right, that's what we are doing. To the SHA of Vega, we will add this particular angle to get the SHA of this particular star. Right, beta, clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. Or beta or quit out of it. Sir, you have an angle P and as a root. So, up now P yoga Aries plus SHA, correct sir? LH Aries plus SHA. Angle P, you mean ZP Vega? No, no, angle ZP Vega, yes sir. Angle ZP Vega is the LH of Vega. This is what we calculated earlier. So, uh, LHA Aries plus SHA Vega? No, beta. No, no, no. Actually, in this diagram, there is no Aries. If you want, we can make Aries and I can explain it to you from there also. Shall I do that? But, sir. Yes, sir. Last question. Better because, uh, okay. Now, I'm telling you, beta. Just a minute. Give me a minute. I will tell you. Just a minute, let me take this to the whiteboard. I'm stopping the or uh, uh, just do one thing better. Uh, let me tell you about the declination. Once I tell you about the declination, I'll explain this with Aries also. OK, let's first finish this. Okay, then we go to the whiteboard. One more time. Okay. OK, all right. So let's now see how do we find out the declination of the unknown star. Uh, concentrate your attention on November to Papa. November to Papa is the elevation of the pole or altitude of the pole. Now we know that the elevation of the pole or altitude of the pole is equal to the latitude of the observer. And we know the latitude is 62 degree 30 minutes. So November to Papa is equal to 62 degrees 30 minutes. November to X-ray, which is the true altitude of the star, is 34 degrees 00, 00 minutes. So I can now easily find out the difference between them. It is going to give me Papa X-ray, PEX. So in this case, the PX is going to be 28 degrees and 30 minutes. It is NP minus NX. NP equal to the latitude is 6230. NX, the altitude of the star given in the question is 34 degrees, giving us Papa X-ray PX as 28 degrees 30 minutes. Now, if you look carefully, Papa X-ray PX is the polar distance of this particular star. Now, we know polar distance is 90 minus declination. So once we have the polar distance, 90 minus the polar distance is going to give us the declination of the star. So we can obtain the declination of the star. Since it is uh, the polar distance from the North Pole, the declination will have another name. It is close to the North Pole, so the declination of the star is North. So once we find the SHA and declination, 
SHA comes out to be 195.33 and declination comes out to be 61 degree 30 minutes. We can go to the star information table on page 268. Look for this SHA 195.33, match the declination and we can identify the star as Dubey. So this is how we solve this question. So used the same principle, put all the information in the rational horizon diagram, applied the spherical trigonometry, Napier's rule, and we were able to find out the SHA and declination of the star identifying it. So, beta, any doubt in the declination? Okay, beta, okay. I'll tell you. Whenever you get a star identification question and you get the SHA and declination from the question and you match it, there can be a bit of difference between your values and the values given in the table. That difference is basically because the position which we are using in these calculations are our uh, DR positions, dead reckoning positions. So because of that, some slight error can be there. So you pick up whatever the nearest value is available in the table. You pick up that particular star and take that as your answer. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. This is one ninety four to challenge. Yeah, that's okay, beta. That's okay. You pick up the star which is having the nearest values which you calculated. Ah, uh, so <clears throat> go ahead, so, beta. The extinguish choice I lost track. Uh, so just three steps I'm going behind. So we get the value of P from the PZX triangle, right? Yeah, PZ Vega triangle. P of Vega of Vega triangle will get from uh, sir, what do you want to do with that? After that, you have to subtract that from 180. Okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Don't worry, relax. I will explain from the marker. Just give me a minute. Okay, beta. So let me now put one more thing here in the diagram uh, to make it a little more clear. How did we get the SHA of this particular star? Now for that, let us assume that Aries is somewhere here. Oh, just a minute. Uh, just a minute, beta. Okay, beta, I'll see. Let me first uh, do the explanation here. Okay, so let us assume that Aries is at this particular location. Okay, let's mark it as Aries. I hope you can see Aries on the screen now. Okay, let us mark the celestial meridian of Aries. So this will be the celestial meridian of Aries. Can you see the celestial meridian of Aries on the screen? Yes, sir. OK. Now, if this is the meridian of Aries and I measure this angle up to here, what will be this angle beta? Can you tell me? Very good. Vega. It, SHA Vega. So this 
is SHA Vega. Let me write it as SHA V. So now you have got this angle as SHA Vega. This particular angle we have calculated. This particular angle we have calculated already in our uh, explanation. If I add this angle, uh, let me make it a yellow angle. So this. This yellow color angle which I have calculated. If I add yellow angle to pink angle, I will get it. Very good. This blue color angle I will get. And this blue angle is basically SHA of the unknown star. So what we understand from here is SHA Vega plus the yellow color angle gives us the SHA of the star. That's what we have done here. ओके ओके बेटा और बताओ बेटा और क्या क्या डाउट्स हैं सर वो देखना सही बात प्लेस ग्रुप कि वो जो किया वैसे सही है कि वो ओके यू हैव शेयर्ड समथिंग ऑन द ग्रुप हाँ ओके लेट मी सी बेटा लेट्स गो टू द ग्रुप लेट मी रेज दिस वैल्यूज Sir, sir, one question, sir. Sir, uh, just a minute, just, 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 yeah. just one minute, just hold on. GH of Aries plus SHA of Vega is equal to. Yeah, that's great, beta. Say, ki aapne. SHA star minus sir, SHA Vega is equal to 180 minus P. That's correct. Okay, sir. Because you have to GH and GH Aries, so you have to. East side will be able to show you. So, I thought that GHA will start with 0, 0, 0 lines. No, perfect, beta. If you understand like this, great. That's okay. Okay, sir. Okay, so now, beta, go ahead. Next doubt. Sir, after we calculated the P from the PZX angle, we have to subtract that from 180 to get the outer angle, right? Exactly, beta. That's right. Okay, perfect. Exactly. So this is the LHA which you will be getting uh, this particular angle blue color angle. Oh, let me. This is the angle which you will be getting from the calculation. The blue color angle you do 180 yeah. minus this and then you will get this red color angle. This is what you will get after 180 minus this is done. Okay, sir. One really stupid doubt. What is the angle, the pink color angle ka naam kya, sir? Uh, uh, it does not have any name. It is basically the difference exactly. of our angle between Vega and the unknown star. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. And then SHA of that unknown star will be Vega ka LHA plus ye unknown pink color angle. Correct? Exactly, beta. Vega ka okay. koi bhi value le lo, the... GHA le lo, LHA le lo, SHA le lo. Agar aap usme ye pink color ka angle add kar doge, to aapko is star ki wo value mil jayegi. Okay, beta, clear? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So this was the next question. Uh, now, beta. Uh, let us just take a short break. Okay. Let's take a very, very short break. Uh, I need to attend an important call. So it's about 1833. Let's meet back at 45. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, but, uh, okay. All right. Let's meet back at 45. Don't leave the meeting. Just stay here. We meet back at 45. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. There, there is a network disruption going on. Something is happening. Uh, Punjab may some issue is going on better because of that. I think uh, the internet is affected. So we had a shutdown here. So anyway, I'm on the backup power now. Let's see if it continues. OK, so let's move to the next question. And uh, let me set up the presentation. 
beta in case a uh, disruption happens the internet goes off or something happens then uh, i will post you on the whatsapp group whether i'll be able to join back or not so i'll just share with you on the whatsapp group right okay okay so let's go into the presentation beta Okay, so this was the last one which we did. Alpha. Now moving on to the next question. Let's go. Yeah, we all yes. Ah, but moving on to the next one. Let's now move on to the next question. Uh, we completed this question, sir. Okay, that's right. Just a minute. Uh. On. Let's move on to the next question now. for a stationary observer the true altitude of an unknown star when bearing south was 14 degrees 11.2 minutes 1 hour and 7 minutes later the true altitude of star betelgeuse having a sha 271 degree 17 minutes declination 7 degrees 24.5 minutes when bearing north was 47 degrees 25.5 minutes identify the unknown star so let's uh, try to uh, uh, put all this information in the rational horizon diagram at a certain point the unknown star was bearing south the altitude was 14 degree 11.2 so after that the observer waited for 1 hour and 7 minutes and after this much time he observed that star betelgeuse was bearing north with a altitude of 4725.5 so we need to identify the unknown star let's make the rational horizon diagram we have the rational horizon points n e s w marked let's mark the center as the zenith of the observer we have the zenith on the diagram now the information given in the question is unknown star was bearing south that means line z to s south bearing and altitude 14 degrees 11.2 so from the horizon which is point s we are 14 degrees 11.2 minutes away so let's mark 14 degrees 11.2 and this is where the unknown star is we have the unknown star in our rational horizon diagram now 1 hour 7 minutes later the star betelgeuse was bearing north north bearing is z to n and the altitude of star betelgeuse was 4725.5 so n point on the horizon 47 degrees 25.5 minutes away from it 4725.5 is where we have betelgeuse so we have the betelgeuse also in our uh, rational horizon diagram now on this particular day the declination of betelgeuse was 7 degrees 24.5 minutes north in other words betelgeuse is 724.5 north of the equinoctial now this tells me equinoctial is 7 degrees 24.5 minutes south of betelgeuse so from star betelgeuse i go 7 degrees 24.5 minutes south and this is where the equinoctial should be passing so i get my q point and i know the equinoctial will pass from q equinoctial always passes from the west and east points 
So I can now mark off the equinoctial in the diagram as W Q E. W Q E is the equinoctial. Now I can easily find out the arc Z to Q. I know what is N to Betelgeuse. It is 47.25.5. I know Betelgeuse to point Q is 724.5. And I know N to Z is 90 degrees. 90 degrees is the radius of this diagram. So 90 minus 47.25.5 minus 724.5 gives me ZQ, which is 35 degrees and 10 minutes. So this 3510 is the latitude of the observer. ZQ is the latitude of the observer. So observer's latitude is 35 degrees, 10 minutes south, because you see the zenith is south of the equinoctial. So 35 degrees, 10 minutes south is the latitude of the observer. So beta, before we proceed ahead, any doubts up to here? Sorry, one more declination. Ka batana, sir. Okay, uh, uh, beta, the declination of star Betelgeuse is given to be 7 degree 24.5 minutes north, right? Right, sir. Now we have fixed up Betelgeuse in our diagram. Correct, Betelgeuse is on an otherly bearing at a altitude of 47.25.5. So Betelgeuse is fixed up. Now Betelgeuse is 7 degrees 24.5 north of the equinoctial. That means the equinoctial has to be 724.5 south of Betelgeuse. Did you get that better? No, sir. Okay, listen again, once again. Betelgeuse is 7 degree north of the equinoctial. Correct? Yes, sir. So equinoctial has to be 7 degree south of Betelgeuse. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got it now, beta? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you can see here in the diagram also, Betelgeuse is at 7 degree north declination and it is 7 degree north of the equinoctial from the Q point. So it fits. Okay, sir. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, uh, any more doubts up to? Go ahead then. Now, once I know the latitude, I can mark off the pole also. The pole is 90 degree away from the equinoctial and uh, it has to be somewhere here. So this is where the pole is. And I know that the elevation of the pole or altitude of the pole, in this case S to P is the elevation of the pole it has to be equal to the latitude of the observer, which is 35 degree 10 minutes. So S to P is 35 degree 10 minutes. S to the particular star is 1411.2. Now this helps me to get the polar distance of the star P to this particular star. It is 3510 minus 1411.2 and 20 degrees 58.8. So I get the polar distance of the unknown star and 90 minus polar distance gives me the declination of this particular star. The declination will be south because we can see the star is 20 degrees away from the south pole. So 90 minus this gives me the declination. I get the declination of the star as 69 degrees 1.2 minutes south. So before proceeding ahead, any doubts up to here, beta? Uh, sir, can you explain the again the direction of the definition? Sir? Okay. Now always remember, beta. Whenever you see the pole south of the zenith, it is always the south pole. So is that clear? That pole is south. Yes, sir. 
Now, if you are 20 degrees away from the South Pole, are you in the Southern Hemisphere or North Hemisphere? Uh, southern. So that tells you why the name of the declination is South? Yes, sir. So, all doubts, beta? Sir, but if P J K coffee pass with our fuel. नहीं बेटा पी जेड के किसी भी पॉइंट पे हो आपको इतना तो पता चल ही जाएगा ना कि ये जेड के साउथ में है या नॉर्थ में है हाँ जी सर जेड साउथ नॉर्थ मालूम चल गया सर राइट सो वेर एवर द पोल इज इफ इट इज साउथ ऑफ द जेनेथ इट हैज टू बी द साउथ पोल इफ इट इज नॉर्थ ऑफ द जेनेथ इट हैज टू बी द नॉर्थ पोल so basis that whichever pole you identify the declination will be having that name only okay sir okay sir okay okay but so yeah apna z sorry p apna upar hota z ke theek hai aur x apna niche hota z ke to to phir south hota na sir wo no beta uh, P अगर Z के ऊपर है तो दैट मीन दैट P इज द नॉर्थ पोल राइट नाउ X कैन बी नॉर्थ ऑफ Z और साउथ ऑफ Z दैट डज नॉट अफेक्ट द डेक्लिनेशन एट ऑल ओके चले बेटा आगे चले वेरी गुड लेट्स गो Now let's draw the declination circle of the unknown star. The star is here. The declination circle will pass from the position of the star and it will be centered at the pole. So we have the declination circle of the star in our rational horizon diagram. The star will be moving in the direction of the arrow like this. The star will be moving in this particular direction. Now whenever you want to check the direction in which the body will be moving consider that we have a celestial body on the equinoctial now that celestial body will be rising at point e moving along the equinoctial and it will be setting at point w all the bodies rise on the eastern horizon and they set on the western horizon so whatever direction this body is moving on the equinoctial the same direction will the declination circle have the star is also going to move in this particular direction only so that gives us the direction in which the star is moving clear beta this one is clear yes okay beta great now the question told us that uh, when we observed the star the next observation was taken 1 hour and 7 minutes later betelgeuse was observed 1 hour 7 minutes later after the observation of this unknown star so let us now try to see after 1 hour and 7 minutes where will the unknown star be unknown star will be moving in this particular direction on its declination circle now we know that stars cover their arc angle at a rate of 15 degrees 2.5 minutes so in 1 hour and 7 minutes the star is going to cover an arc angle of 16 degrees 47.8 minutes so let me show this arc angle in the diagram now from this position the star is going to move in this direction by an amount of 16 degrees 47.8 minutes so this is where the star is going to be now let me draw the celestial meridian of the star we name the star as x and p to x represents the celestial meridian of this particular star now once i have the celestial meridian on the diagram 
I can now also easily find out angle Z P X. Pay your attention to this particular angle Z P X. We can easily find out this angle as 180 minus the R angle of the star. So 180 minus 1647.8. 180 minus 1647.8 gives me the angle ZPX as 163 12.2 minutes. So let's mark it in our diagram. This is the angle which we have found now. And this angle is 163 degrees 12.2 minutes. Now, if you look carefully in the diagram, this is the pole and this is star battle geese. This is the celestial meridian of star Betelgeuse. P, Z, Q, N is the celestial meridian of star Betelgeuse. And the celestial meridian of the unknown star is P, X. Now, if you look carefully, this unknown star is 163 degrees, 12.2 minutes east of Betelgeuse. This is where Betelgeuse is. If you go in the easterly direction, see this is the easterly direction. So from Betelgeuse, if you go in the easterly direction by an angle of 163 degrees, 12.2 minutes, you reach up to the unknown star. Or in other words, the unknown star is 163 degrees, 12.2 minutes east of Betelgeuse. So this tells me that the SHA of the unknown star will be SHA of Betelgeuse minus 163 12.2. Why there is a minus here? Because SHA is a westerly measurement. SHA is measured in the westerly direction. If the star was west of Betelgeuse, we would have added this angle. But the star is east of Betelgeuse. So we have subtracted this angle from the SHA of Betelgeuse. It will give us the SHA of the unknown star, which comes out to be 108 degrees, 4.8 minutes. So SHA of Betelgeuse is available to us from the almanac. Minus this value gives me 108, 4.8, which will be the SHA of the unknown star. So now I have the so now I have the SHA of the unknown star as well as the declination of the unknown star. Using these two values, if I go to the star table on page 268, I can easily look out for the star and it comes out to be Atria. So the unknown star is Atria. So you see, we followed exactly the same approach. We put all the information in the rational horizon diagram and we got the answer. We got the unknown star. So better have a good look at the diagram. Uh, let me know your doubts. So can you explain the SHA star X please on, on them once more? Okay, beta, okay. Now beta, if you look at the diagram, uh, is it clear to you that this star, unknown star, is 163 degrees east of Betelgeuse? Yes, sir. Uh, that is right. NP, NPX. Yeah, the angle NPX is 163 degrees. So we know that this unknown star is 163 degrees east of Betelgeuse, right? Yes, it means that it's a difference in our angle, right? Sir? From the Betelgeuse. Exactly, beta. it is the difference in our angle between these two and the star is east of Betelgeuse. Now, SHA is a westerly measurement. It is measured in the westerly direction. If you go in east, the SHA would decrease. So that means the SHA of this particular star would be 163 degree lesser than the SHA of Betelgeuse because it is east of it. So that's why we found out the SHA of the star by using SHA Betelgeuse minus 163 degrees. 
So uh, the hassle is still remaining. So Irish will come on west side, right? Ah, uh, okay. You want to fit Aries here? Yes. Sir. Okay. ठीक है बेटा वो भी करके दिखाता हूँ एक मिनट रुक जाओ बिफोर आई डू दैट एनी अदर डाउट्स बेटा एरीज में अभी फिट करके दिखाता हूँ आपको ओके ग्रेट सो लेट मी ब्रिंग इन द एरीज आल्सो हियर इट बिकम स्लाइटली कॉम्प्लिकेटेड बट लेट मी एक्सप्लेन दैट टू यू जस्ट अ मिनट ओके okay, बेटा सो so, अब मैं यहाँ पे आपको ना एरीज बना के दिखा रहा हूँ लड़स पिकअप पिंक कलर और या लड़स पिकअप ब्लू ना इफ यू वांट टू फिट एरीज हियर एरीज वुड कम जस्ट टू कीप थिंग सिंपल we can assume that the aries is at this particular location you can show this as the aries meridian okay beta can you see the aries meridian in blue uh, yes sir so the angles will be from the aries to clockwise right sir Right yeah. now, SHE of the unknown star will be this particular angle, the blue color angle which I have shown. Now this will so be the is, SHE. Uh, uh, easterly, right, sir? Easterly or angle, right, sir? No, beta. No, it is not easterly. Not easterly. You see, this direction is westerly direction. Ah, huh? always see the direction when it is crossing your meridian. Okay, this is westerly direction. When you look at Earth from the South Pole, the westerly direction is anti-clockwise. When you look from top of the North Pole, the westerly direction is clockwise. Okay. Okay. So this blue angle which you see is the SHE of the unknown star. Now let me show you the SHE of Betelgeuse also. Let me show this in red. SHA of Betelgeuse is going to be this particular value up to here. So this pink color angle which I have shown, this one, is the SHA of Betelgeuse, and the blue color angle here is the SHA of the unknown star. Let me erase the unnecessary lines. So SHA of Betelgeuse minus 163 degrees will give you the SHA of the unknown star. Yes, sir. I'm got it. Understand. Okay. Yes, so sir. okay, sir. beta. All right. Ah, bolo beta. Sir, it would have been better if we give the Aries to him, which Betelgeuse with respect to Aries, they are 271 degrees. That is, yeah, right. uh, that it is in the North Pole. तो हम वो ईस्ट वाली साइड से थोड़ा सा ऊपर बनाएंगे 271 डिग्री है ना ओके okay, बेटा ठीक है एग्जैक्टली exactly बना देते हैं तो वहां से मैं समझ गया सर लेकिन वहां के रेफरेंस में अगर साउथ पोल दिखाते तो आई थिंक दोनों चीज एक साथ हो जाती ये रहा एसएचए ऑफ बेटलगीज इज 271 ओके सो लेट अस ट्राई टू फिट इट देयर लेट मी रिमूव दिस सो फ्रॉम बेटलगीज If I go 271 degrees east, that is where Aries would be. So from here, okay, I'm going 271 degrees. So up to here 180, up to here 270, 271 maybe somewhere here. So this is where the celestial meridian of Aries would be, somewhere here. Let me show Aries. and this pink angle is 271 this is the exact value of sha of betelgeuse now let me show you the sha of the unknown star let us show it with blue color 
एस एच ए ऑफ द अनोन स्टार विल बी दिस एंगल अप टू एक्स एंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन देम हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी थ्री ट्वेल्व पॉइंट टू सर ये 271 आपने साउथ पोल के रिस्पेक्ट में प्लॉट किया ना क्लॉकवाइज ना दैट्स राइट बेटा बिकॉज़ वी हैव द साउथ पोल सो वी विल हैव टू प्लॉट एवरीथिंग विद रिस्पेक्ट टू साउथ पोल इट इज नॉर्थ में जरा तो मुझे लगा आई वाज प्लॉटिंग दिस साइड देन डिफरेंस सेम आ रहा है बट मैं अलग तरीके से प्लॉट कर रहा था ओके ओके सो और बताओ बेटा और क्या डाउट आ रहा है nothing sir very good great so you have an idea now how these questions look like star identification ke question humne kar li kar liye hain these are basically the pzx triangle based questions so shall i remove the presentation now yes sir okay great okay so beta i'll be giving you a few more questions also uh, in an assignment which will have this pzx triangle concept so please practice those questions also so uh, that was our pzx triangle question now we are moving on to our uh, next topic so this is one topic which comes in question number 8 and 9 rational horizon diagram pzx triangle some other topics which come in those 8 and 9 questions are uh, questions based on stellar magnitude questions based on kepler's laws of planetary motion so i'm going to show you what type of questions come based on those topics so shall we go into that presentation oh, yes okay let's go सो so, बेटा पहले मैं आपको एक स्टेलर मैग्नीट्यूड का क्वेश्चन दिखा रहा हूँ दिस इज अ टिपिकल क्वेश्चन विच हैज कम इन आवर पेपर्स सो इस क्वेश्चन में एक स्पेशल कॉन्सेप्ट यूज होता है दैट इज द लॉगरिथमिक कॉन्सेप्ट सो लेट अस सी दिस क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट now the first concept which we are going to look into is the concept of uh, stellar magnitude now we are aware stellar magnitude is basically a scale which gives us the apparent or relative brightness of different celestial bodies uh, let's see the question the question says star a has a magnitude of minus 0.8 and it is 30 times brighter than star b find the magnitude of star b now all these questions which we are discussing are picked up from the past papers so let us see how do we attempt this question now for doing this question we need to be aware of uh, two things number 1 that uh, the stellar magnitude gives us a formula or a relationship with which we can find out how many times a particular body is brighter or dimmer than the other body what is that formula the number of times a star is brighter than the other is given by the formula 2.51 raised to power the difference of their magnitudes so this is the formula which we will be using in this uh, question now second concept which we need to be aware of uh, which we have done in our school time uh, that is a logarithmic uh, concept that formula logarithmic formula is 
log of a raised to power b is equal to b multiplied by log of a so this is a logarithmic uh, formula uh, which we will be using which we need to use to solve this particular question so once we are aware of these two things the question can now be solved first of all let's assume that the difference of magnitudes between the two bodies is x if the difference of magnitude between the two stars star a and star b is x that tells us 2.51 raised to power x should be equal to how many times one star is brighter than the other now this is given to us in the question the question says that star a is 30 times brighter than star b so this tells us 2.51 raised to power x is equal to 30 now uh, we want to solve this relationship for x so for this what we do is we take a log on uh, both the sides so this gives us log of 2.51 raised to power x is equal to log of 30 now applying the logarithmic formula which we saw log of a raised to power b is equal to b multiplied by log a similarly you see log of 2.51 raised to power x is equal to x multiplied by log of 2.51 and this is equal to log of 30 now keeping x on one side and taking the other items on the opposite side we get x is equal to log 30 upon log of 2.51 we can easily solve this uh, using our scientific calculators So when we solve this for x it gives us the value as 3.6958 So this x which was assumed to be the difference of magnitude between star a and b has been found to be 3.6958 Now it is given that the magnitude of star a is minus 0.8 the difference is 3.6958 and uh, since star b is dimmer it is given in the question star a is 30 times brighter than star b so this tells us that the star b is a dimmer star now since it is dimmer or less bright its magnitude number will be greater than the magnitude number of a we know that the stellar magnitude scale is a reverse logarithmic scale that means as the brightness increases the magnitude decreases and as the brightness goes down the magnitude number increases so this tells us that star b which is dimmer its magnitude number should be greater than the magnitude of a so magnitude of a was minus 0.8 the difference between the two is 3.6958 this is the difference between magnitudes of a and b and magnitude of b has to be greater than the magnitude of a so what we do is we add this difference 3.6958 to the magnitude of a which is minus 0.8 giving us a value of 2.8958 so this is the magnitude of star b so you can see now star b magnitude 2.8958 star a magnitude is minus 0.8 the difference between both of them is 3.6958 and if you use that difference in this equation 2.51 raised to power this difference it will give you the value of 30 so this is how the question is solved so any doubts in this beta no sir sir 2.51 raised to 2 2.8958 की वैल्यू 30 आनी चाहिए ना अह नहीं बेटा 
2.51 raised to 3.6958. This is okay. the difference. Huh? Okay. So you can try that out. Just punch in the calculator and see if it comes to 30. Anti-lock karna padega na? Nahi, kuch anti nahi karega. Bhai, aise aa raha hai. To 2.51 ke upar 3.6958 ki value 30 aa ja rahi hai. बेटा एक ही काम करना पड़ेगा अपने कैलकुलेटर में लॉक का बटन कहाँ है वो ढूंढना पड़ेगा यस सर यस सर यस सर इट्स ओके सर हाँ और एक और चीज अब तुम्हें बता दू मैं कि तुम्हारे कैलकुलेटर में इफ दे आर गुड साइंटिफिक कैलकुलेटर दो लॉग होंगे एक होगा लॉग टू द पार लॉग टू द बेस ई एक होगा नेचुरल लॉक सो दोनों में से कोई भी लॉग यूज कर सकते हो आप बोथ ऑफ देम विल गिव यू द सेम वैल्यू ओके सो so, बस वो बटन ढूंढ लेना बेटा दैट इज द ओनली प्रिकॉशन इफ यू वांट यू कैन पंच इन दीज नंबर्स एंड सी इफ यू गेट द आंसर आ रहा है सर आ रहा है एक ही लॉट गॉट सर गॉट इट ओके ग्रेट वेरी गुड सो दिस इज अ टिपिकल क्वेश्चन व्हिच हैज कम सो नाउ यू नो इफ दिस कम्स हाउ इट इज टू बी डन चलें बेटा आगे ahead now. Now moving further, the next set of questions is based on Kepler's laws of planetary motion. So there are three uh, laws which uh, basically give us an uh, idea about the motion of planets around the sun in the solar system. So before we go into the numerical, let us uh, uh, discuss about the uh, Kepler's three laws of planetary the first law of kepler states that all the planets revolve around the sun in elliptical orbits so as you can see we have this blue color planet revolving around the sun in an elliptical orbit the green color orbit which we see in the diagram is having elliptical shape now before kepler people used to believe that the orbits of planets are circular but uh, kepler's uh, with his observations proved that these orbits are not circular but elliptical though the ellipticity of these orbits is very very less they are very close to a circular shape but still they are not exactly a circle they are not exactly circular they are actually elliptical now just as a circle has one center the ellipse on the other hand has two reference points and these reference points are known as focus so it has focus 1 and focus 2 in uh, plural it is known as foci so all the planets revolve around the sun in elliptical orbits every elliptical orbit has two foci and sun is situated at one of the foci of the ellipse the other foci is uh, blank there is uh, nothing there but sun is situated at one of the foci of the elliptical orbit of all the planets this is kepler's first law any doubts beta negative sir very good now moving on to kepler's uh, second law kepler's second law states that the radius vector of a planet sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time let us understand with the help of a diagram 
we see the sun as the yellow circle in the middle of the diagram and then we see a elliptical orbit of a particular planet and uh, in this elliptical orbit let us assume that on a particular day when we started our observation the planet was at this particular location you can follow the laser pointer so let us assume that on one particular day when we started observing the planet, the planet was at this particular location where the laser pointer is right now. Now, if the planet is at this location, the radius vector of the planet is this one. You can follow the laser pointer. Uh, this is the radius vector of the planet. Now, after that, the planet starts to move. We keep on observing the planet day after day. And let us say after 30 days, we again make up our observation and the planet has reached up to here. Now, in this interval of 30 days, the radius vector of the planet has covered an area which is shaded in blue. This is the area swept by the radius vector of the planet in a duration of 30 days. Now, after this, the planet, uh, we, we stop our observation. The planet keeps on moving on its orbit. Now, when you are moving on an elliptical orbit, at some places, you will be far away from the foci, which is basically the sun. And at some places, you will go closer to the foci. In a circle, all the points on the circumference are equidistant from the center, but in a ellipse, the track of the ellipse sometimes goes closer to the foci, to a particular foci, and sometimes goes away from the foci. So the planet moves further and it uh, reaches at this particular location where the laser pointer is right now on a certain day. And we start our observation again. Now we start our observation. This is the radius vector of the planet right now. The planet continues to move and we keep observing the planet for the same duration of 30 days. Now, after 30 days, we observe that the planet has reached up to this particular point. And you can see this is the radius vector of the planet now. The area which is swept by the radius vector of the planet in the same duration of 30 days is represented by this blue color sector. So you can see the two different sectors as the areas swept out by the radius vector of a planet during its two different locations in its orbit. Now Kepler said that the area swept out by the radius vector of the planet in equal intervals of time will be equal. So the area of this blue sector will be equal to the area of this blue color sector. Both their areas are going to be same. Now, what does this tell us about the motion of the planets in its orbit? Now, if the planet has to sweep out equal areas in equal intervals of time, the planet will have to move faster in its orbit when it is closer to the sun. You see, at this particular location, the planet is much closer to the sun as compared to the previous observation. So with the planet being much closer to the sun, you see the length of the radius vector is much smaller as compared to the previous uh, case. Now with the length of radius vector being much smaller, if it has to sweep out equal area, it has to move at a much faster pace or much faster speed in its orbit. Now, when the planet is far away from the sun in this particular condition, you can see the radius vector is very, very long as compared to the radius vector in the previous instance. Now, with the radius vector very, very long, if it has to sweep out equal area in equal interval of time, the radius vector or the planet has to move very slowly in this part of its orbit. So it gives us an indication 
that the planet moves faster when it is closer to the sun you can see this is the sector where it is closer to the sun and the planet has moved quite fast in its orbit and when the planet is far away from the sun it will move very slowly as compared to the previous instance so the motion of the planet or the speed with which it uh, covers its orbit is not constant or fixed the planet keeps on changing its speed it becomes slow when it is far away from the sun and it gains speed it picks up speed and becomes faster when it is closer to the sun so this is kepler's second law of planetary motion the radius vector of a planet sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time indicating to us that the planet will be moving faster in its orbit when it is closer to the sun and it will be moving slower in its orbit when it is farther away from the sun so any doubts beta no sir very good beta great now moving on to kepler's third law of planetary motion kepler's third law basically gives us the relationship between the mean distance of a planet from the sun which is also known as its orbital radius represented by alphabet r and the time it takes to complete one revolution around the sun which is also known as its orbital period represented by alphabet t so the third law gives us a relationship between the orbital radius and the orbital period of a particular planet what does the law say the law says that the square of a planet's orbital period is proportional to the cube of the mean distance of the planet from the sun in other words t square is proportional to r cube it can be denoted in this particular relationship t square upon r cube is constant can be considered as k t is the orbital period of a planet let's say for example if you take the case of the earth so in the case of earth the orbital period is 365.25 days and r is the orbital radius mean orbital radius of a planet in case of earth the mean orbital radius of the earth's orbit around the sun is 93 million miles or 93 into 10 raised to power 6 miles so this is the relationship given by kepler's third law of planetary motion t square by r cube is equal to constant this is a very important relationship and uh, we get uh, numerical question based on uh, this particular relationship clear beta any doubts no very good now how can we utilize this relationship in the numerical questions now for using this relationship we need to be aware of the orbital time or the time earth takes to complete one orbit around the earth, around the sun and the orbital radius of the earth now we know that the time period orbital time period of the earth is 365.25 days and we know the orbital radius of the earth 
is 93 million miles, which is 93 into 10 raised to power 6 miles. So T square upon R cube of Earth converts to 365.25 square divided by 93 into 10 raised to power 6 cube. This being constant for each and every planet should be equal to T square by R cube of any of the planets of the solar system. If you look carefully now in this relationship, T square by R cube of Earth is known to us. If we are given the orbital radius or the orbital time period of any of the planets, one of these two items is provided to us by using this relationship, we can easily find out the second unknown item. If the orbital time period of a planet is given, we can put that in this relationship and we can obtain its orbital radius. And the opposite is also true. If they provide us with the orbital radius of a particular planet, we should be able to calculate the orbital time period of that particular planet. Now for this, you need to be aware of these two values, the orbital time period of the Earth, 365.25 days, and the mean orbital radius of the Earth, 93 into 10 raised to power 6 miles. These figures are uh, uh, not given in the question. It is expected that the candidate is aware of these figures to be used in a numerical based on the Kepler's laws. Clear, but this constant of her planet is not going to Say again, but this ratio T square of R cube equals to constant. Then this constant will be different for different planets. No, but it is the same for all the planets. That's why it is called constant. Huh? Okay, sir. So you take the T and R of any planet, and when you put it in this relationship, it will give you the same value. Okay, sir. Okay. Let's go, son. Let's go. Okay, sir. Let's go. Now, next we refer to some uh, planet uh, configurations. Configurations basically means a particular location of the planet in its orbit. So the terms which are used to represent or show planet configurations are conjunction, number two, opposition, and number three, quadrature. They basically tell us about the position of a planet with respect to the sun. Let us now understand all these three configurations or all these three terms with the help of a diagram. Uh, let's show the sun in our diagram. Then uh, around the sun, we show planet Earth. I have uh, shown it in blue color. Our Earth is a blue planet. And let's show the orbit of the Earth now. We have the orbit of the Earth on the diagram. Now let's show another planet of the solar system. We show the red planet and it is the Mars planet. We are aware that the orbit of Mars is greater than the orbit of the Earth. So let's now show the orbit of the Mars. We have the orbit of the Mars in our diagram. Now, both Earth and Mars are revolving around the sun in their orbits. The speed at which they are revolving around the sun is different. They are revolving around the sun with different speeds. All the planets have different speeds. We just saw the uh, third law of Kepler's planetary motion, which said uh, 
t square by r cube is equal to constant so as the radius keeps on increasing the time period also keeps on increasing so that tells us that the angular speed with which the planets revolve around the sun will also keep on changing from planet to planet now with varying speed it is possible that the earth and a particular planet may be at different locations with respect to the sun like for example right now when you see in the diagram you can see that for an observer on the earth the sun as well as the planet mars are in the same direction both the sun and planet mars are in the same direction uh, any doubts beta okay all right maybe some disturbance let's continue now this particular placement of the planet with respect to the sun is called as conjunction we say that this particular planet or planet mars is in conjunction with the sun so this is the meaning of the first term which is conjunction basically means that the planet is in the same direction as the sun the planet is in conjunction with the sun now let's say after some time uh, we keep on observing this particular planet and uh, this particular planet moves to a different uh, placement in its orbit and right now the planet has moved to this particular placement this particular location in its orbit now for an observer on the earth with the planet mars at this particular location you can see now that the sun and the planet mars are opposite to each other or they are in opposite directions the sun is in one particular direction and the planet mars is exactly in the opposite direction now this particular uh, orientation is called as opposition we say the planet mars is in opposition to the sun so opposition basically means that that particular planet and the sun are in totally opposite directions now uh, let's assume that the uh, planet keeps on moving in its orbit with some relative speed and at another particular instant we observe that the planet mars is at this particular uh, placement or location in its orbit now if you observe this planet mars carefully you see the direction in which the planet mars is is at right angles to the direction in which the sun is so whenever a planet is at right angles to the direction in which the sun is it is called as quadrature so this is the planet mars in quadrature the direction in which the planet mars is is 90 degree away from the direction in which the sun is now there is a possibility another possibility of quadrature if the planet mars at a particular instant reaches to this location in the diagram you can follow the laser pointer so at this particular location also the direction in which the planet is is at right angles to the direction of the sun so it tells us that this particular planet is in quadrature with the sun so conjunction means the sun and a particular planet are in the same direction or the angle between them is zero opposition means that the direction in which the sun and a particular planet are exactly opposite to each other or the angle between the sun and that particular planet is 180 and quadrature means that the direction in which the sun is is 90 degree 
be away from the direction in which the planet is or the angle between the sun and the planet is 90 degrees. Now, these terms are important from the point of view that uh, whenever we get numerical based on uh, Kepler's laws of planetary motion, sometimes these uh, concepts are used in the question. So we should be aware of what these terms means to accurately solve that particular question. So this is the importance of understanding these terms. Any doubts, Peter? Very good, Peter. Great. Now, the next important concept which we have is the concept of elongation. Let's understand what elongation is. Elongation of a planet is the angle at the center of the Earth between the Sun and that particular planet. Let's try to understand it with the help of a diagram. We have the Sun in our uh, screen now. Uh, let's show the planet Earth. We can also mark off the orbit of planet Earth. You can see the orbit of Earth in uh, blue color. Now let's show another planet. In this case, we show planet Venus. Now Venus is uh, closer to the sun as compared to the Earth. So let's now mark off the radius of uh, the orbit of Venus also. You can see the orbit of Venus in in maroon color as shown by the laser pointer. Let's now try to show the radius vector of Venus as well as Earth. So you can see this uh, dotted line joining the center of Sun with the center of the Venus. This marks off the radius vector of planet Venus. Similarly, you can see this uh, blue color dotted line showing the radius of the Earth. Now let's uh, draw another line joining the center of the Earth and the center of the planet Venus. So you can see this uh, red color line joining the center of Earth with the center of Venus. Now from this diagram, we can easily understand what elongation is. You see this uh, red highlighted angle in the diagram is what is elongation. Let's try to match with the definition of elongation. The definition C says elongation of a planet is the angle at the center of the Earth. You see this red angle is being made at the center of the Earth between the sun and the planet. So from the center of the Earth, a line joining the center of the sun and a line joining the center of the Venus angle between those two lines is the elongation. So angle at the center of the Earth contained between the sun and that particular planet is known as the elongation of that particular planet. Now, as Earth and Venus are moving with the different orbital speeds, different angular velocities in their orbits, their location with respect to each other will keep on changing. The planet Venus could be at uh, any particular elongation depending upon what is its position in its orbit. Let's assume that uh, if planet Venus is at this particular position, this particular position here, the elongation will be the blue color line showing the radius of the Earth and the line joining the center of the Earth with the location of Venus at this particular point. If Venus is at this particular location here, the elongation will again be by the angle between the radius of the Earth and the line joining the center of Earth with center of the Venus. Now, if you look carefully, 
that as the planet Venus moves in its orbit, you can follow the laser pointer. At this particular point, Venus will be in conjunction with the sun or the elongation will be zero degrees. Now, as it moves in its orbit, the elongation will start to increase. At this particular point, at the first location, it will have a certain elongation. After this, the elongation will keep on increasing. Now, if you look carefully at this particular point, Venus will have the maximum elongation. The angle at the center of Earth will be maximum at this particular placement of Venus in its orbit. As Venus moves forward in its orbit, you see the elongation will start to reduce again. Now, this point where the maximum elongation occurs, if you look carefully, you will see it is the point where from the center of Earth, if you draw a tangent to the orbit of Venus, the tangent meets the orbit of Venus at this particular point. This is the point where Venus is going to have maximum elongation. And we are aware that uh, the tangent is always perpendicular to the radius of a circle. So this line joining the center of Earth with the center of the Venus, the red dotted line represents a tangent. And this line joining the center of Sun with the center of Venus represents the radius of the Venus. So they will be at right angles. So this angle here at planet Venus will be 90 degrees. So this is the point of maximum elongation of Venus. And we know at the point of maximum elongation, the angle made at point Venus between the sun and the earth would be 90 degrees. Now this particular diagram is uh, used in uh, solving some of the questions. So you should be clear about the concept of maximum elongation and uh, what is this angle which is made at the planet at the time of maximum elongation. Now if you consider a exterior planet, Exterior planet means uh, the planet whose radius is greater than the radius of the Earth, like say for example Mars. Now, the maximum elongation of Mars is going to be 180 degrees. The maximum value of elongation is possible, which it can be, is 180 degrees. For a exterior planet like Mars, it can reach up to its maximum elongation. That is 180 degrees when it is in opposition to the sun. But for a inferior planet like Mercury or Venus, the maximum elongation will uh, uh, be less than uh, 90 degrees. And uh, it will depend upon the radius of that particular planet and the radius of the Earth. Now, inferior planets like uh, Venus, as you see in this diagram, can never be in opposition to the sun. They can never be in opposition. Irrespective of whichever position they are in their orbit, they can never go in a direction which is opposite to the direction of the sun. And at the same time, if you look carefully, you will observe that these inferior planets like Mercury and Venus can also never be in quadrature with the Sun. To be in quadrature, the angle at the center of the Earth or the elongation has to be 90 degrees, which is not possible in this particular case. So opposition and quadrature can only be attained by inferior planet, uh, sorry, exterior planets whose radius is greater than the radius of the Earth. And for inferior planets like Mercury and Venus, whose radius is less than the radius of the Earth, they can never be in quadrature and in opposition. So any doubts in this beta?
Very good, beta. Great. So this completes our. Sir, uh, ah, bolo, beta. Sir, Venus ka radius to Earth se chota uh, hogana chhe. Uh, Venus ka orbital radius, Earth ki orbital radius se chota hai, beta. So, any doubt you are having, better? No, sir. It's clear, sir. Okay, all right. So, with this, we complete this uh, uh, Kepler's laws of planetary motion and these uh, definitions. These are all used in the numerical questions. So, I'll be sharing with you a set of numerical questions. I am closing the presentation now. So I'll be sharing with you better one assignment now. Us assignment may jo humne aaj discuss kiya hai. Uh, the Kepler's laws of planetary motion, conjunction, opposition, quadrature, maximum elongation. Ye sare concepts ke question us mein aapko milenge. So iske saath aapko jo PZX triangle ke questions humne kiye hain, uske bhi questions milenge. So please attempt those questions. Uh, there are some questions in that assignment based on charts and projections. So just leave those questions for the time being. This is the topic which we are going to pick up in the next class. OK, better. Okay, I'll explain that to you better. No issues. I'll explain that. Okay, you can share that question on the uh, WhatsApp group also. Let me have a look and uh, if possible, may I will share your solution. Yeah, oh. sir, I had shared that question, sir. Question number okay, eight. Okay, better. Let me have a look. I'll share the solution on the group itself. Uh, okay, sir. Okay, let me see this question is there. Uh, okay, well, find the duration of PM civil twilight on the longest day of Southern Hemisphere. This one? Yes, sir. Okay, beta. Okay, I'll share the solution. So next class, beta, which is going to be our, in that we are going to do charts and projections. And along with that, any doubts which you may have, because with charts and projection, our navigation syllabus is complete. Right, beta. Emotional logic. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So we were able to close out uh, within time. And uh, uh, let me share the uh, assignment with you. So any doubts which you are having, uh, you can keep on sharing them on the on the WhatsApp group. I'll try to provide the solutions. Uh, uh, whatever possible on the group itself. Uh, if it is not possible on the group, then we'll discuss in the next class. So that's all from my side for today, better. OK, sir. Bye bye. Bye, sir. Bye bye. See you. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Jai Hind. Jai Hind.